Hey everybody. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Jim Grzanzia from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. We are in Stockholm, Sweden for the third version of this interview with Heli here because people keep walking in front of the camera. So, <laughs> um, Heli, Helsky, wow. Heli, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So we're going to go through the same thing that we talked about the two previous interviews, <laughs> but I have a guard over there now guarding the camera. Um, okay, machine learning. This is, this is a topic that interests me. You've been into this for a long time. I'm interested in it personally. We're at a very big Java conference here in Stockholm. This is Jay Focus. You gave a session earlier today. You showed me a picture. It was a full session. So Java developers are obviously interested in machine learning. Um, well, you know, what did you talk about? I talked about the basics. So what is machine learning about? So if you want to start with machine learning, what should you know? So very basics. Okay. So let's start actually with some basics with me because um, I'm just looking at a person walking toward the camera there. <laughs> um, we have this you know, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm, I'm rather ignorant here, but um, we have this large term of artificial intelligence and then maybe machine learning and deep learning are sort of, you know, subsets within that larger field. And then you mentioned earlier several others, actually. Um, so what are some of these distinctions? Mm. So artificial intelligence is the big one. And inside it, we have machine learning, which is like the brain or the heart of the artificial intelligence. Uh, it, it, machine learning is the one that teaches artificial intelligence. So without machine learning, it would not learn. And uh, machine learning, we have unsupervised learning, we have supervised, we have semi-supervised, and then we have reinforcement learning. So these might be the categories that people usually mention. The deep learning is part of uh, supervised learning. The difference is that it's actually main, meant for all kind of things that has levels like face recognition, speech recognition, uh, speech to text, that kind of things that has different levels or layers. Uh, it's, um, it's like if, if we do classification, we can do it with sub supervised learning, but if we do it with deep learning, we can kind of skip the uh, feature extraction part. So defining what features really affect the outcome, the prediction. So like if we talk about the temperature, do we have to see if the sun is shining, is it winter, is it summer? What kind of features are those that will affect what we will predict the temperature to be next Monday? So that kind of things uh, deep learning is doing automatically. But the problem with deep learning is that it needs a lot of data, a lot of resources and so on and so on. So is it as precise? It is precise if you teach it well. There are examples where you taught it not so well, so it looks like it's perfect. A classical example is about dogs and wolves. So it was very good recognizing if it's a dog or if it's a wolf. You know, it's very difficult even with human eyes to know which one it is. But this was very good model to do it until one picture came and it was wrong. It said this is a dog and it was a wolf. Then they started to find out what happened, why was it wrong? And actually the reason was that it didn't learn dogs and wolves, it learned grass and snow. So grass is dog, snow is wolf. So it didn't learn what you thought it learned because of the data you gave it. So the most important thing with machine learning is the data. If you give it wrong kind of data or just small tiny little amount of certain kind of data, it will learn that but nothing else. So when the new data comes, it fails. Okay, so I'm hearing this and that seems very rational and I've actually heard your speak before and I walk out of the session thinking, okay, the computers aren't going to take over the world tomorrow, but in the lay population, there's a fair amount of angst about artificial intelligence. Um, but what you just described, I mean, this, you know, there's still a lot of work that has to be done before we're all sort of sitting around doing nothing and the computers are running everything. Yeah, it will take a long time. So like the deep learning we just talked about, 2012 was a breakthrough for that for many reasons. We got the GPUs, we got pre-trained pre uh, models, we got data sets, we got convolutional networks. So a lot of things were invented and sudden, suddenly it was possible to do deep learning. Before that, it was too much resource consuming. It took so long to train the model and so on and so on. So I think what we should be expecting now is reinforcement learning. We will need to invent a lot of things to be able to really uh, use it in many, many ways that we could do it, but that might be the one that you are talking about that will conquer the world, but still I doubt it. Yeah, I mean, that's this is um, 
one of the things that I've, uh, I've learned is a lot of the technologies that you're talking about have been emerging for a long time, for decades. But you mentioned earlier that we've only been able to do certain things now, more recently, because of the, uh, of the processing ability. Um, so, but other forms of technology have been evolving for decades as well, and they don't necessarily have this you know, problem in terms of, of people being afraid of it. Um, are developers... How is this affecting developers, I should, I should say, in terms of the skills they have to learn, or uh, are they also concerned about their jobs being affected? I think as long as you don't know what we are talking about, you are afraid, because you, people tend to be afraid of things they don't know. So I think the best thing you can do is to find out more about machine learning so you know if you should be afraid or not. And I would say you don't have to be afraid because machine learning is just a small part of it. There's still the traditional programming part left, which is, I think, better done by human beings. You know, the if-else, that kind of things. But if it's more complex, then it might be a machine learning task. So not everything will be machine learning from day zero or day five or day whatever. It, it will still be different kind of tasks. But knowing what machine learning is all about bring you the ability to choose. Will this be something I want to do? Like in high school, I loved math and I learned so much and I never had the chance to use it. Maybe machine learning is the place where you can use all those skills that you acquired and you loved so much. Or maybe you realize that machine learning is something I definitely never want to do because I love the basic programming, if else, when whatever happens. I love to do that. So maybe that's what you will learn. But at least you know not to be afraid because this is what you like to do and you will still keep doing. And if I think about um, the rest of the population, uh, we have those robots that are doing vacuum cleaning. I'm sure you love vacuuming your house. We all do. But some people might want to have the robot to do it. So most of the time when a robot or artificial intelligence is, is replacing us, it's jobs that we don't like so much. So I would kind of embrace this opportunity to have these robots do the some of the jobs that I don't like so much. And I agree. I totally agree with that. And also for people who are concerned, like I was, you know, I mean, I've been concerned, but if I go see your talk or I watch, you know, some other engineers on YouTube or something, if you watch the really serious ones after a session, you go, oh, okay, I can understand now. I can put this into context. Um, okay. So what, what's up for you now after this conference? Where do you go from here? I'm going home, which is a surprise to my family. <laughs> And for home for you is just around the corner, right? Yes, it's Finland, Helsinki, Finland. Yes, so that, that's going to be very nice for a while. Then actually in March, I'm going to Denver for Dev.next conference, which I will be actually presenting about deep learning. So they asked me to come and, and give us a, presenta a presentation about what is deep learning, somehow how introduc introduction of the topic. So what is deep learning about? What should you know about deep learning? It's going to be 75 minutes, so it's going to be even a little bit deep dive, not just the basic kind. Yeah, so it will this be... This is like in Denver, right? In Denver, US, yeah. yeah. I wanted to go to that conference, but I won't be there. But you'll see a lot of my you know, colleagues there, for sure. And uh, so, hello, Heli, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Third time's a charm. We got this interview in. <laughs> I have a guardian in the camera there. So, all right, guys, we're done. See you guys later. Bye-bye.